everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. We got our 1976 Dodge D100 pickup in the shop here, and today we're going to change the rear end. To bring you up to speed on this, here's our problem. We're stuck with a one-wheel peel rear end in this truck, and it's got kind of smooth tires on it, and it doesn't weigh a lot. And every time I go anywhere that's not paved or concrete, it, it, this happens. All this stuff came out of the, out of the fender here because it, it, it doesn't have a good time uh, in low, low traction situations. So we went ahead and built up this nine and a quarter sure grip axle for it. Um, I'll put the link in the description box below to the previous two videos. Today we're going to put it in. First thing we're going to do is um, get the hubcaps off with our handy dandy special hubcap removing tool here and get the lug nuts cracked. I guess three quarters, hope they are, not the 13 sixteenths. Hello, Cooper. Are you helping? Mm -hmm. Are you helping? Alrighty. Get the other side done, then we'll get the jack under it. So you can see here, this is our opinion angle. We'd like to maintain um, something around that. That looks pretty good. It's got just a little bit, not too much, and not perfectly straight. That's, that's where you want to be. So like I said in the earlier video, that rear end is from a four-wheel drive truck, and I'm, I'm not sure how the angle is going to be on it. it. It might have a bit more than we want. It, it might not. Time will tell. There we are, we've got it. Wheels off, secured on axle stands. Now the first thing we're gonna do is get the adjustment backed off on the parking brake and get the parking brake cables all unhooked. I kinda think, good thing we bought new ones because um, this guy here is seized tight as a drum and it's not even too old. Uh, yeah, the land of almost fits has struck yet again anyway the original cables that they put on these things lasted forever but once you have to start replacing them oh man nightmare anyway whatever we're gonna change them and then we'll uh, put a drain pan under the under the back of the transmission and pull the drive shaft out Um, I got the drums off and you can see here both sides the other side isn't quite as bad as this side But it's bad the um, axle seals have been leaking and the brakes are all contaminated with um, Axle grease, but not not a big deal Because our new axle is going in with everything new and this will get fixed up I've got uh, something in store maybe down the road for these big uh, 11 inch brakes Next thing I'm going to do is undo the brake line that connects to the flex hose and we'll uh, just put a vacuum cap over it so it doesn't leak brake fluid all over the place while we're working. You can see here when Deb's dad did this up, he did a nice job. Everything is new back here and unlike our nine and a quarter, this eight and a quarter actually had the, the, remote, um, the remote vent already factory installed. So that, that's something anyway. But this... The hose has gotten kind of hard, so we'll just bring this down with the axle. The hose on our nine and a quarter that, that we got from the junkyard is still supple, probably because it's like 30 years newer than this one. <laughs> so that's what we'll go with. Here we can see we've got our, our flex hose undone. So now I'm going to go ahead and get that um, off of the rear end. And we're going to get the um, the brake lines off too, and I'll put plugs in the wheel cylinders. Then what the plan is, we're going to pull the cover off, get the C-clips out, pull the axles out. I'm going to pull these backing plates out in one piece complete, and they'll uh, get stored with the drums until we need them. Okay, the cover is off, and we can see here 100%. You can read it right there. It's a 355 gear, so we know that. Um, we won't be having to change speedo gears or anything like that. 355 out, 355 in. Now all we got to do is 
pull this little pin here and uh, and hope it's not, I don't even want to say it. We'll get this out and uh, get the cross shaft and the axles out. Well, now the moment of truth. Let's see if we get just the threads or the whole thing. Look at that. We got the whole thing. Thank goodness. So we can uh, get the cross shaft out. And then we'll, uh, let's see here. Should spin around. Oh, there it comes. All righty. There. Now, axle. There. There's one C-clip. And there's the other one. Good. Now we can pull the axles out and get the backing plates off. Once C-clips are off, the axles just pull straight out. Let me grab a rag. There, get the other one out, and then you just undo these three or four three-eighths nuts, and a backing plate comes right off. And just for comparison, here's the difference between a nine and a quarter axle and an eight and a quarter axle. Number one, the nine and a quarter, the flange is just a tiny bit thicker. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. You can see here, that's the same diameter. They both use the same axle bearing and the same seal. And this here. So these axles themselves are basically capable of carrying the same amount of weight. What the nine and a quarter was for was for power, not for weight. You can see here, the difference is at this end. The eight and a quarter axle necks way down, the nine and a quarter axle doesn't. Well, at least not as much. And look at the difference. The eight and a quarter on the left is a 27 spline, the nine and a quarter is a 31. Pretty heavy duty piece. Let's see how this goes. And it does look like it's had axle seals put in it, but um, I don't know why the brakes are so covered in oil. It's possible that the vent, if the vent, even though it had the vent hose and everything on it, if that was plugged, um, it'll it'll force it'll force it out out the seals, you know. We'll find out. I'm going to um, I'm going to check that. Anyway, doesn't matter right now. We just got to get this off. Hopefully, these nuts are not too bad. Sometimes they get so out of the way, there's no corners left on them. And you end up pounding on metric sockets, doing all kinds of weird stuff to get them off. But uh, the other side came off okay, so hopefully this side will be good too. There you go. We got the nuts off. Now, the good mallet, you give it a couple of... Couple of bangs on the back to dislodge it, and off it comes. Now, I'll just stick the nuts back on here. They're shot, but they'll at least um, protect the ends of these studs. If, uh, depending where I end up storing this thing, they get banged or whacked or whatever. Now we'll uh, stick the axles and C-clips and cross shaft and the cover and everything all back together and we can get ready to drop this thing. All right, we're down to the nitty gritty. All that's left is the U-bolts. The shock absorbers, rather than just dropping the bottom off and leaving them hanging for two more bolts, I just took them right out. So now we're gonna have a go at these U-bolts and see what happens. Whoa, it moved. Okay, promising. I think I'm gonna maybe get on them with the, with the impact gun and we'll see what happens. Well, that's this side apart. In the end, I had to get the, uh, the big boy torch out to um, just heat them nuts up so they, they come down. I was doing okay with the, with the map gas torch, but they'd only turn like one or two turns. The problem with U-bolts is they're so long and they're so springy um, the impact gun will start moving the nut and as soon as it gets gets out a little bit so that there's no more tension on the bolt it just it just springs and and, and the nuts just won't come off 
when you got to use the torch on you bolt nuts, they're not nearly as seized as they seem they are. But anyway, whatever. We'll go get the other side um, done, and then we can get this thing out of here. Okay, that's this side all done. So all we got to do is lower it down, get it out of here, and then I'll uh, I'll clean up my mess, and uh, we can get the uh, the get the new one started in. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind if you're fiddling around with these things, especially here in the salt belt, this center bolt, the center bolt in the leaf spring, it goes right through. There's a nut on the bottom. That's what holds this pack together. If this thing fails, um, you could have leaf springs going flying everywhere. So if, if you're not too sure about it, put some hose clamps around it or a couple of big C clamps on it just to kind of hold it together. This one looks like it should be okay, so I'm not going to bother with it. But um, I have seen that happen. You know, another thing I just noticed, all the spring clamps are gone, just like Dad's Dakota. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that up, no worries. Um, wow, that was a bit of work, but hey, it's out now. Here's the two of them side by each, just for comparative purposes before we go and put that one in. Um, you can see here, the nine and a quarter has definitely got a chunkier center section. Um, this has got a thicker web, but less pronounced. This one, the web is thinner, but it's definitely um, more substantial. It goes further out to the edge of the casting. Um, and the other thing you'll notice is the stepped tubes. That helps it carry a little more weight where it's it's three and a half from here out to here then it necks down to three inch this one's three inch all the way out um i mean don't get me wrong these eight and a quarters are more than capable they put these in i got a three quarter ton van with an eight and a quarter in it they put them behind big blocks and sea bodies you know nothing wrong with them at all i just could not find a sure grip for this thing if i could have found a sure grip it would have been a lot easier. I'd have just pulled the axles out and put the sure grip in it, right? But anyway, well, we'll have a sure grip now. We got it under. We're slowly jacking it up. I've got the, the pad on that side engaged with the center bolt. So it's just a matter now of slowly, slowly lifting this side up and getting it engaged. The U-bolts and nuts actually look pretty good. I think we can reuse them there. What will happen is like if they're all rusted, like there'll be bald spots in the threads from rust and there's not. The threads are all good, solid. Um, I ran a half inch fine thread chaser down them, at least as far as the nuts go, right? And now I'm in the process of running a tap through the nuts and they're all looking good. Um, it's not, a, not, not too bad, you just... Put a little transmission oil in them and run the tap through on low speed and that cleans them up. I think we'll be fine to reuse all this stuff. I've got the U-bolts and everything installed. That's looking pretty good. Now we're going to start tightening them up. So what I've done is I've put a jack under the rear end and pushed the springs up. You want it at least close to ride height when you start torquing on these U-bolts. Um, and you want them, oh, the focus, man. Come on, focus, focus. There we are. And you want them to pull up even so that, I mean, you don't want to have three quarters of an inch of thread showing on this one and an eighth of an inch showing on that one. So we're going to work them up nice and even, and then we're going to torque them. I checked in the book, 65 foot pounds. That's what we'll torque them to. I'll be back when I've got all that done. I don't know if you want to sit there for five minutes watching me torque nuts. All right, you can see there we've got them all torqued up and they're all relatively even in how much, how much thread is sticking out past the nut. You don't want to go crazy, you know, and torque this one all the way while that one's still loose. You got to draw them up pretty evenly and uh, you'll have a good result. So what we're going to do now is what I like to do with these is once I've torqued them, I uh, let them sit for five or ten minutes and then come around and whack them with a hammer 
and that just kind of settles anything in that that wasn't settled in and they'll usually move a tiny bit more and then that'll be it we won't mess with it anymore so in the meantime while we wait i'm probably going to go ahead and um uh start hooking up maybe i'll hook up the um the the upper brake line and get this get this vent hose on it's easier to do all that stuff before we put the shock absorbers in all right we're moving right along here we've got the the flex hose attached up to there the hard line is attached to the flex hose we've got our parking brake cables routed through the bracket and uh terminated there with their clips we'll hook up the the rest of it after now i'm gonna go ahead and put the shock absorbers up now is the time to do that Now we'll get our vent line uh, clipped up into the chassis there somewhere. I've got the little clip for it, so I'll just have a kind of have a look around under there, find a place where it's got lots of room and can do its thing. All right, there we are now. I've got all the parking brake cables hooked back up. We're not going to bother adjusting them until we get our new brake drums and we'll get all the brakes adjusted up then. But for now, uh, what we do have to do is change the rear U-joint in our drive shaft so we can get the shaft back in. First we'll check the front one. It's good. You don't feel any tight spots or anything. It moves nice and freely. That's good. It's even got a grease fitting. And now this back one, they're pretty easy to change. We've been through this before. We just pop off these little clips here. There's one on each side. And then we'll use a couple of sockets to knock the joint out, one thing at a time. I guess it wouldn't hurt to set up the tripod, would it? All right, let's go. First little clip, there's the end of it. Sometimes old buggers just want to turn around and around and not actually come off. There we go. Where'd it go? Well, we'll find it later. That one's in the other way around. There. Oh, we know where that one is. Okay, so now we're going to get a couple of sockets. Short one, though, maybe. Okay, so we're going to push this side of it out. Is it going into the socket? Oh, look, it's getting stuck in the socket. Okay, I needed the next socket more big. Oh, whatever. Give me a sec. There's always a screw up somewhere. Now I gotta get this thing out of my socket. Cause this is a good U-joint, I don't wanna wreck it. Okay, once we got this one, this side out, then, now we gotta make sure we got the bigger socket this time. And we can gently tap on this. We don't wanna really wail on it because we don't wanna wreck it. There we go. And she's out. Then our U-joint just... Come on. There it is. Out. So now we'll package this guy up. I gotta find that little rubber seal that we lost. There, I gotta find the other little clip. There's one. And then we can package that one back up for future reference. So here's our new U-joint. You'll see that compared to the old one, 
it matches up this way, but that way is the large size to fit the to fit the yoke that we have on the axle. And what I've done is this is how it's going to go in the grease fitting there. So it's in line with the grease fitting on the front U-joint. Also, we have to bear in mind that our little clips, there's two sizes. There's this ones are for uh, the small caps because the caps are bigger in diameter on this one too. And these are the ones for the large caps. So we're just going to keep them aside for now. We'll go ahead and get this U-joint installed. Come on. Oh, she's almost in. There we go. All right, so we're going to get this. Oh, dang it, the seal came off the other side. Hang on. This thing is a really tight fit in here. Let's try that again. Oh, it falls right through. Okay. We'll put that on after then. So. All right, now you're going to kind of hold this up while we tap this guy in. There it goes. Now we're gonna push it a little too far and we're gonna put our small clippy thing on. Come on. There we are. Good. Now we can flip it over. Put our seal back down in there. And start this. Now, because we pushed the other cup too far, we've got a little bit of, of cross sticking through to get our needles started. So we don't just... Dislodge the needles while we're tapping this thing in. There it goes. Okay. Now we've got that through. It feels a little tight now, but that's okay. We'll get our clip on this side. Good. And then all you do, a couple of bits of wood, we're going to seat them now. Just give it a whack. You support the cross, a couple of blocks of wood, go bang, that seats that cup against the, you'll see now it turns nice and easy. And we'll do the same thing on the other side and seat that snap ring against the back of the yoke. There. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and stick the large size clips. We could have done that beforehand too, I guess. Wouldn't really matter. Whoops. There, now we can go put this drive shaft in. Um, another thing that I bought was a new strap kit because the, the straps that were on our old rear end were for the small U-joint and there was only one on the new rear end and the bolts were missing and everything. So you know what? Let's start with new ones. They are, they are unique to what size of um, joint you're using. So that's good. We're gonna crawl under there and get this baby stuck back in the transmission and see how it fits. That went together perfectly. You can see we've got... Oh, it's hard to tell because the stupid flash. There, flash, there we go. Perfect. 
The drive shaft is running in pretty much exactly the same spot it was running with the with the eight and a quarter. We've got uh, about an inch that that it can go in, or or even more before it bottoms out. So that's good. And you can see here. Our pinion angle is just perfect, exactly the same as it was with the eight and a quarter. So that also proves my theory that two wheel and four wheel drive trucks use the same rear end. Okay, and now while we were doing all that other stuff, these things were resting. So I'm just gonna go bang on them a bit. And then we'll hit them with the torque wrench again and just make sure. That went well. A couple of them moved a little bit, but not too much. So we had them good. And uh, that's it, man. They're, they're all torqued up. You just don't want to... If you get one that, you know, you're you're turning and turning and turning and turning and it's not torquing up, you need a new U-bolt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these ones all... They all ran the number and they're holding. So, so that's good. And I left myself a note. <laughs> Well, I guess that'll do it for this one. We got lots done. We'll finish it up in the next one. It's going to be marooned in here for a couple of days uh, while I wait for the brake drums to show up. So uh, while I wait for those in the next video, we're going to make some clamps. We're going to make some clamps for the springs. Uh, while it's got its butt end up in the air like this, I'm going to make a trick little trailer hitch for it. Not really to tow trailers, but um, I got a, a little goat head third brake light that sticks in the trailer hitch we can put in. Plus, it's a handy place. I've got a thing I call the truck umbrella. It's like I, I didn't exactly invent it, but I've got one, and it's just a little thing we made up to go in a trailer hitch, and you can stick a patio umbrella on. So if you're at a, you know, a car show somewhere on a hot, sunny day, they don't always have shady spots for you to park. So you can put a patio umbrella up on the back of your truck, and uh, being that it's a truck, we've got the means of transporting a patio umbrella. And I'm sure we'll find some other stuff to do underneath there. We can, uh, the, even though the, these are not the brake drums that are going to be on it, there's brake drums on it. So we could start it up and run it a bit in gear to get the, get the lube all circulated through the rear end. And, uh, and uh, that'll be that. And then once it's on the ground, we'll take it outside. It will follow the bizarre factory procedure for checking the sure grip differential to make sure it's functioning properly. Anyway, with that, I'm going to go. I've got a very important date with those Maple Leafs. Oh, those Maple Leafs, they're on tonight. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> you never know with them. You never know what squad is going to show up. But anyway, let's hope for the best. Hope for two points for my Maple Leafs. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you'll come back and see us again. And until next time, I'm Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage.